Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis, and we're going to be talking about the cost calculator project. I may or may not have gone over this in class, but I want to cover this in the video lesson here so that uh, you can prepare for the next exam. So let me go ahead and type in the name of this project here. This is a Visual Basic program, so we'll say cost calculator project. Okay, so let me go ahead and click the toolbox and I'm going to click the auto height push pin so that it stays intact and I'm going to drag a button to the form I'll also drag a label and let me also drag a text box to the form I'm going to move the label to the upper left hand corner I don't need this toolbox anymore so I'm going to click the auto height push pin for the text property let me go ahead and type in item one price and I'll move the text box underneath it I'm going to resize it so that it fits the same width as the label. That looks good. So I'm going to take these two, Control C and then Control V as in Victor for copy and paste. And I'll put it right next to it, something like that, with a little bit of a space. Now that's not supposed to say item 1, that's supposed to say item 2. So for the text property, I'll change this to the number 2, press Enter. I'm now going to take this button and I'll resize it underneath those two text boxes. That's supposed to say the word calculate. So I'll type in calculate, calculate, there we go. Um, next I have to put a label down here, actually a series of three labels. So what I'll do is I'll copy this and I'll paste it, place this over here, and that is supposed to say minimum price. So I'll just put min price. And then I'll take this label, copy and paste it again. For this label, I wanted to have the auto size property set to false, the border style fix 3D, and then I'm going to get rid of the text inside of it. So I'll double click over here, hit delete to get rid of that text. Okay, let me go ahead and make this the same size as this text box here. So I'll take this resizing handle and I'll move it up until I see that blue line. I'm going to move this one up so I see that bottom blue line, and then I can go ahead and place it into the appropriate position like this. I'll make it a little bit wider. That looks good. So then I'm going to take these two. I'll copy by Control C, Control V is for paste. Move that into position. Control V again. Move this guy into position. That looks good. Now instead of min price, I'm going to say this is max price. So max price. And then for this one, we'll say total. So this is going to be total colon. All right, there we go. All right, let me go ahead and resize the form, and I'll just simply click on it like this. I don't want the minimize or the maximize box, so I'll double click on maximize box, double click on minimize box, so that's why we don't see those. On the text property, I'm going to type cost calculator. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let me go ahead and give names to all these items. So for this top text box, that's going to be TXT item one price. Enter. Well, obviously, that's going to be TXT item 2 price for the next text box. This button is going to be BTN calculate. This label I will call LBL min price. Now, by the way, I'm noticing that some of you are accidentally selecting these labels. I don't want you to name these labels because nothing happens to them programmatically, but you should be naming these labels over here. This is where content is actually going to be displayed. So for this one, we're going to call it LBL max price. And then finally for this bottom text box, we'll say that's LBL total. Enter. Let me just double check my work. So click over here. My eyes are over here in this section where the name property is. So that's TXT item 1, item 2 price, BTN calculate, LBL min price, LBL max price, LBL total. Looks good. Let me go ahead and save my work. And uh, what I'm now going to do is double click the calculate button so that I can start to type the code. So I'll double click calculate. The first thing you should be doing is to enter the four comments. First is declarations, get user input calculation and then output. Start off every time typing these four comments. 
Well, in terms of the declarations, let's say that I have to give you the actual variables. And so in this case, um, I think I'm going to create an item one and an item two variable so that I can get the text from this text box and put it into the variable item one. And I'll declare those as doubles. And same thing with item two, declare that as a double. I also should keep track of the output, which will be min price, max price, and total. So let me go ahead and create some variables min price as double, dim max price as double, and then finally total. And that will also be as a double. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and work on the get user input section. And for the get user input, that means just getting the data from here and from here. So let me go ahead and get the data from this text box. So that means that item is going to be signed, item one that is, is going to be assigned, and I'll say convert dot to double, whatever is inside of the text box, txt item one price, so I'll hit tab, dot, te, I don't even have to type in text because it already appears here, so I'll just simply hit tab, close the parentheses. I'm now gonna do the same thing for item two. Again, convert dot to double, whatever is inside of the text box, uh, item two price, so I'll double click, dot te for text, hit the tab button, close the parentheses. I now have the user input. For the calculation part, well, I mean, certainly we wanna be able to find the minimum price, so the min price, and there's a mathematical function called min. So this is really cool because I give it two values. See, here's the first value, comma, the second value, and it's gonna to return to me the smaller of the two. So if I just put item one over here, comma, item two, close parentheses. Now what this thing does is it gives me the smaller of item one or item two and it assigns it to min price. I'm gonna do the same thing for max price. So we'll say max price, but instead of using the min function, I'll use the max function, item one, comma, item two. So what this, whoops, let me type in item two, there we go. What this does is it takes the larger of these two and assigns it to the value max price. The last thing to do is to go ahead and determine the total and that's gonna be the summation of item one plus item two. All right, now that I have the three items, min, max, and total, I can go ahead and output those to the label. So LBL min price dot text, don't forget that part. And we'll say convert dot to string because these are numbers, right? Min price is a number, but we intend on putting it into the text property of this label. So you have to make sure you convert this thing to a string. Now that we've finished the min price, let's go ahead and work on the max price dot text. Again, convert dot to string, whatever is inside max price. And then finally, we have the LBL total label. That's going to be. Um, convert dot to string whatever is in the variable total there we go and that should do it let's go ahead and run the program so you can either press F5 or we can click this button here the start debugging button give it a couple seconds and it's going to compile it and now we can go ahead and enter some values so let me wait just a second here as it finishes up the co compilation process there we go all right, let me click inside here. Let's type in $2 and $3. Say, for example, I click calculate. The minimum price is two, the maximum is three, the total is five, that works. Let me switch these around. How about $5.45? And let's say uh, $2.55. All right, so the min price is $2.55, that's true. The maximum price is $5.45, and the total is $8. Yep, that works out nicely. Uh, let's go ahead and try a different value over here, like what about $1.37, say for example. Okay, and as you can see here, the various values are displayed correctly once I click the Calculate button. All right, so this is how you complete uh, a Visual Basic program, and let's say that you want to send it to me via Blackboard or something like that. So let me go ahead and just save all the work, and I'm going to click the Close button. I'm now going to open up Windows Explorer. So Windows Explorer allows me to take the folder that I just created, I'm gonna turn that into a zip folder, and then I'm gonna attach it, say for example, to uh, a Visual Basic uh, assignment. So I click on Documents, 
and then I should find the Visual Studio 2010 folder or whatever the version of Visual Studio you're using. Here's the Projects folder. Double click on that. Sure enough, since everything is sorted by date, here's the Cost Calculator project. So let's say that I want to send this to or attach this as an assignment uh, for credit. So I'm going to right click on top of this particular folder and then I'm going to say Send To and then Compressed Zip Folder. So I click this guy and then it gives me a sample of uh, what the name is supposed to be uh, or what the name is recommended to be. Cost Calculator Project Zip. That sounds fine to me. I press enter on the keyboard and then it's going to lock the changes. So you can see here that this is a compressed or a zipped folder and also here this indicates that this is a zipped folder. There's a little tiny zipper right here. Okay, so let me demonstrate how to attach this cost calculator project zip file to uh, a Blackboard assignment or a Blackboard question. So let me switch over here to Internet Explorer. I already have a uh, testing one, two, three exam. So let me go ahead and click this guy. Let me click begin. And let's see, what's the question? It says, attach a zip file of the Visual Basic project. OK, well, that's the Visual Basic pro project that I just worked on. So what you would do is you would click Browse My Computer. There we go. And then we're going to look inside the Documents folder, inside of the Visual Studio 2010 folder, and then within the Projects folder. And then if I look toward the bottom, probably there it is. It's Cost Calculator uh, Project.zip. So I'm going to click Open. Now it uploads the file, and you can see here, cost calculator project.zip. That's the file that I want. If I accidentally selected the incorrect one, I could click remove, but that is the correct one. So at this point, all I have to do is just save and submit. All right, so this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.